Hello and welcome to this week's lab on Ohm's Law. Now Ohm's Law in electronics states that the voltage, okay, so V stands for voltage, voltage V has units of volts. We'll also be talking about um, current. Let's go ahead and just talk about label all the, all the quantities we're talking about here. Current, let me just spell it out here, current. I is a symbol for current and it's measured in amps. A. Sometimes milliamps, M-A. And last of all we'll be looking at resistance. Resistance is R and it's going to be measured in ohms, which is this um, <clears throat> Greek symbol here. Looks like an upside down horseshoe, capital Omega. So, um, <laughs> all right, so these are the quantities that we'll be using. Now, Ohm's law says that the relationship between these three quantities, voltage, current, and resistance, goes like this voltage is equal to the product of current and resistance. V is equal to IR. And so um, if you have an ohmic device, then for a large range of voltages, this relationship holds true. You, you can see there that one assumption of this is V over I is equal to R. And so for a wide range of voltages, if this ratio of voltage to current remains the same for a constant value of R, then that device is considered to be ohmic. However, as you vary voltage, you know, you increase the voltage, current's gonna also increase, but maybe not by the same ratio. As it changes temperature or voltages, you know, grow, you may get a varying R, and in this case, it's a non-ohmic device. And so we'll be working with two different types of devices, an ohmic device, which is um, the ceramic resistor that's in this, in this block here. This is labeled resistor A. And we also have resistor B, it's also ohmic. Now, however, a light bulb is a non-ohmic device. And so when we uh, make measurements of the light bulb, you'll notice that as you vary your values of voltage, uh, you'll get a corresponding increase in the current, but your, the slope of that relationship, voltage versus current, is not constant, so it's a non-ohmic device. But as you uh, look at the relationship, a graphical relationship between voltage and current, and it looks linear, then that device is considered to be ohmic. All right, so let's talk about how we're going to do that. Well, in order to determine a relationship between voltage and current, we'll need, first of all, a power supply to deliver our voltages. Uh, right now we're using this four battery pack. Um, you can also use a standard power supply that has a varying voltage knob. And so for um, to measure the voltage here, we basically have five volt, different voltage levels that we can apply. Each of these batteries is around one and a half volts. And so um, if I were to take and attach, let's look, where's the negative side? Okay, right here. This to ground. Okay. This will be our ground or our, or our most, the negative side of the batteries. We'll take that to be our common reference point when we measure our voltages. All right, so, and then maybe um, I'll, ta I'll attach this Fonstock clip to this other lead, okay? And so here are my possible voltages. First of all, zero volts, the battery pack not applied, right? But then I can put this Fonstock clip um, maybe in this first slot of the battery pack. So I've got from ground to here, if I clip that, I've got one and a half volts. Now, if I move this to between the next two batter batteries, now I have one and a half plus one and a half or three volts. I can move it over here to get around four and a half volts, and I can get it over here to, for a total of six volts. So zero, one and a half, three, four and a half, and six. Five different voltages. Now, um, of course, these batteries are not a constant, so I don't know exactly what the voltage is, but that's why I have my voltmeter. And now when I apply these, um, I'm not going to just measure the battery voltage. I want to measure the voltage across the resistor. 
Now the resistor is the only component in the system. It's going to be the only load in the system. And so most of that battery voltage is going to be uh, dropped across this load. Now some of, the, some of it will be dropped through the wires, okay? But the larger the um, <coughs> resistance, then um, the more voltage is going to be dropped across it as it turns out in a circuit. So these wires have a very small resistance and so not much voltage will be used up or dropped up across these wires. Most of our applied battery voltage will be seen right here across the resistor. So let's say I want to measure that. Well I've got my fluke multimeter and for the voltage measurements I want to plug the black lead into the common and then the red lead into the volt ohm range. And then I'll dial this around to DC volts. I have a volts with a sine wave, this is AC volts, but then behind it I have volts with a dotted and dashed line. This indicates volts DC or direct current. And batteries, of course, are, are, a, are a direct current source. An alternating current source would be uh, something that comes from maybe the, you know, the plug-in on the wall. So this is a direct current source, so we do direct current voltage, voltage with a line, straight line and dashes by it. And then um, let's create our circuit. Now the circuit is going to be just basically a series circuit that includes the power supply, some wires, and the resistor. And so I'll build this really quickly. So here's my power supply, and I'll put a wire there. Okay. And a wire there. And I've got all six volts being measured here. So I put this out here. And I can just clip my, um, my leads to these terminals here on the resistor. And there we go. I've got a circuit. This is all I need to make a circuit. So, um, so now these batteries are supplying power to that. Now if I want to know what the um, voltage across that is, well, I just take my um, meter and then I just uh, kind of put these little leads across the top there. And look at that, I'm reading 4.64 volts. So this is not the full 6 volts that you would expect. Maybe the batteries are weak, maybe the wires have high resistance. So, um, and I just put those probes just right into the top of the resistor and read the voltage right across that resistor. There's a resistor inside of here. And, um, and again, I'm reading voltage, not resistance. It's telling me that there's 4.64 volts across the resistor. Well, um, that's all well and good, but I want to look at the relationship between voltage and current. And so to do that, I have to measure the current as well. Now, um, if you've done our circuits lab, and you may have, you know that when you measure current, we'll use a, another meter here. The black lead here I've got attached to the common, but then the red lead I have not in the volt ohm range, but over here in the 300 milliamp range. So it's in the milliamp range. And I'm going to dial this around to read amps DC, not the amps with the sine wave, but the amps DC. And so in order to read the current, now I just read across the resistor with the voltmeter, that's fine. But to read the current I have to be part of the series, so part of the circuit with my current meter. So I actually have to disconnect one of the wires and in its place connect it to the meter. So I've got the wire now, the, um, the ground here going to the resistor and then into the meter, the common, out the 300 milliamp and then then to the end of the battery. And so when I do that, I start, I read a, a value here. This says 23.83. Now, um, this is not amps. That will be a lot of amps. That is actually milliamps. Here, let me grab another alligator here so that I can make my connection permanent. That is actually milliamps. So 23 milliamps, is, or 0.83 milliamps, is what I was reading. And so I can read these things simultaneously now. So I turn this on. And there we go. Now we're reading uh, simultaneously a current and a voltage. 
And so by doing that, I've got my first data point when I go to examine the relationship between current and voltage. So um, I've got 4.59 volts, 23.86 milliamps. So from Ohm's law, I could calculate the resistance. But I want to know, is it ohmic? Is it this consistent over a broad range? And so the way I'll do that then is using my little fun stock clip here. Right now I'm reading the total voltage. But as I clip this to here and I just read across maybe just three of the batteries, now I've dropped down to um, uh, 3.2 volts and 16.7 milliamps. So I decrease the voltage, decrease the current. I can go all the way down. I can get, and of course here is zero volts. We have zero amps. So I've got five different voltages, five different currents. I can look at the um, relationship between voltage and current, and the slope of that is the resistance, and I can tell you if it's ohmic or not. Now we're going to do this with resistor A. We're going to also do this with resistor B. So now you'll have two resistors, and you'll know their values. And so uh, once you do that, now we're going to take a look at what happens when we put these two resistors together in parallel and in series. And you've got maybe some experience with that if you've been in our capacitor lab. But if not, um, let me uh, grab my whiteboard and I'll give you a quick example. All right, so let's discuss these uh, parallel and series circuits. So we have our power supply. This is a battery. And I'll put a little error through it. This lets me know I can vary this power supply. And then coming through here, I had, if you remember, my ammeter. And then that was in series, went uh, through the 300 milliamp out to common. And then after that, I have my resistor. Okay, so I'll call that resistor A. Um, let me make a little jagged resistor symbol so it looks sort of more conventional. So this is resistor A, and then back to the ground part of the power supply. And then when I measured the voltage, I just measured it directly here across resistor A. And so I got voltage and current. I varied that and got five different values. Now, um, but let's see, what if, what if we wanted to know what resistor A, and then we can change that out, we did resistor B. But let's talk about these in series. Now when resistors are in series, it means that they have, the current can only go, uh, only has one choice of a direction to go. It has to go through one resistor and then through the next. There's no branch in the current. And so, um, so what I can do then is I can take my resistors here and put them in a, in a row. So I've got one resistor there one resistor there, we'll call this a resistor A, and resistor B. And I can measure the voltage across both resistors and see what the voltage is across both of those together. Now when resistors are in parallel, what that means is that the current can make a branch and go in two different directions. And so I can draw that sort of like this. Um, let's put our resistor A back where it was, but let me make a little bit of a possible other path here. We'll call this resistor B. And now the current can go in this junction and splits up between A and B and then recombines here on the other side of A and B into what it was before it hit the junction. So current has a path, two paths to take. And so because the ends of each resistor are tied together electrically, they're considered to be in parallel. And again, we can read the voltage across one of those. It's the same as reading it across both of those because these two points are the same point electrically. So the voltage across RA is the same as the voltage across RB. And so our prediction is that when you're adding resistors in series, okay, the total resistance, RT, R total, is going to be just the sum of the arithmetic sum of these individual resistors, RA plus RB plus all the alphabet of resistors. And this is when they're in series. However, when they're in parallel like this, you get a different relationship. As it turns out, um, it's like drinking with two straws. You have two straws in parallel, it's going to pull more current from the cup. And so because more current is able to flow, your resistance actually goes down. 
your total resistance is less than the sum, any one of the individual resistors when they're in parallel. So it's like putting, putting two straws into a drink. Resistance goes down, even though you're adding a straw. That's sort of like the resistors are here with the, um, in our circuit. So when they're in parallel, so I call this series relationship, and this is parallel. So when they're in parallel, here's our relationship. Our one over the total resistance, okay, and this will be derived for you in lecture, is equal to one over RA plus one over RB, resistor B, plus and as many resistors as you want to go. And so, um, as it turns out, once you do this, you find out that R total is less than RA, it's less than RB, and, on, and so forth. So, um, <clears throat> once you've made those, you've constructed those circuits, you can actually look at this relationship between voltage and current for resistors in series and parallel, and um, uh, see, if that, see if those equations hold true. Now, the last thing I think we're going to do, we have a non-ohmic device. That is this um, light bulb. And it turns out that as light bulbs get hot, their resistance goes up. And that's one of the reasons why when you first plug in a uh, light bulb, when you first connect the power, sometimes that's the time the light bulb blows. And the reason is because the resistance at that point is low, so there's more current flowing through the filament. As the light bulb heats up, resistance increases, so less current flows through the filament and there's less likely um, a chance that it's going to that it's going to blow. So we're going to look at this and see if we observe that phenomenon looking at a voltage versus current graph if indeed you do get a change in um, resistance as that voltage changes. So um, that's going to be interesting to see. And that's our lab on Ohm's Law.